So last week we had a little bit of fun on the channel. I used a, an app from my phone called Game Eye, which I'm going to start using to catalog my collection. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. I've had the app for a while. I've just been too lazy. It's free. But a cool thing with the app is you can actually uh, use it to, to price your collection and it uses price charting, which is pretty accurate. So if you watched my video last week, uh, you'll know that I started with my GameCube and I decided, you know what, I'm going to take the three most expensive games in my GameCube collection and figure out what their price is and then let you guys know, do I think that it's worth the money? Now, if you watch that video, well, if you haven't watched that video, go back and check out that video. But if you have watched that video, then you know that those prices were insane. So insane that no matter how good the games may or may not have been, it was hard for me to recommend them regardless. I mean, when you're talking prices that high, it's just too much. It's kind of crazy. So I was going to make the next video in the series. Uh, it seems like you guys really liked it, so I was going to keep this rolling. But I had an idea. Before I jump off the GameCube, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking, what about the three cheapest games? What about the three cheapest games on that list? I mean, like, first off, how much are they? Pennies? Nickels? Who knows? And then on top of that, are they worth it? Um, I will say that I think going forward, I'm going to keep the series going, and I am going to do most expensive and cheapest. So this is the cheapest video for the GameCube, and I will start out, and I'll, I'll make sure to say this every time, um, unless it's like a weird sports title, I'm not going to include generic sports titles. By that, I mean like Madden 2011, 2012, 2013. Those are always worth like a dollar or two, except for like the weird super rare one. But that being said, something that's like a weird standout, like that is a sports game, will be included. But uh, other than that, it, it will not be included. That being said, let's check out the three cheapest GameCube games in my collection and see if they are worth your time. Clocking in at number three with a price tag of 15 bucks is the Sonic Mega Collection. And I'm gonna tell you right now, just without even going through all this, this game is absolutely worth every bit of $15. I mean, I know, I get it. Every single one of these games has been ported over to like 50 different consoles. But I'll tell you right now, this game has just some really great, awesome kind of bonus features. One thing I really, really love is how they have the original manuals for every single game. The cool thing is you flip through them just like if you were to open up your clam shell case on your Sega Genesis and go through it. Um, I mean, they're all scanned, really high quality. It's a really cool thing and you can check them out in a gallery mode. You can also check them out before starting each game. Another really cool thing they have on here is basically they have cover art for hundreds of the comic books. Um, actually, they have like the first full series, all of their covers, and then they have a bunch of just kind of extra ones off to the side. It's really neat. I mean, would it be cool if the whole comic was in here? Yeah, probably a little bit cooler. But I mean, once again, this is just a little extra. It's a little freebie. It's really kind of cool that they preserved the history of the comic books. Usually with collections like this, they're only talking about the games. But, you know, back in the 90s, if you grew up then, you knew that Sonic was like way more than just a video game. I mean, it had a TV show, had tons of comic books, and those comic books are actually still being made to this day. So, you know, extras like this are stuff that I really look out for in these collections, and I, I'm, I'm really quite surprised that I found this on the cheapest part of my GameCube collection, but once again, stuff like this is just really, really cool to me. Another very cool inclusion with this is the uh, character illustrations. Now, I did notice one thing that's kind of strange about this. Um, you know, with the main characters, they do show some early iterations, but mostly this seems to be art kind of promoting Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, which makes sense because around the time of this game coming out on the GameCube, they were uh, either have made or were in the process of doing the remakes of Sonic Adventure DX and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which, uh, you know, those were originally Dreamcast games, but then they were ported over to the game. GameCube, thank God. Um, but it's still kind of neat that they show some early concept art. I like how the Eggman one has like the old Robotnik and then the new Eggman. But you know, I always like concept art and stuff like this. And once again, just cool extra features to this uh, entire collection. The last thing I kind of really dig about this uh, collection is they have some intro movies from the Sonic franchise. They have the Sonic CD intro and ending. They have a little uh, kind of like a trailer for Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Advance. And then they also have this thing called the History of Sonic, which is like literally just them going through and playing a little bit of every game, showing some dates, showing some stuff. 
Um, I really think The History of Sonic is, is a cool deal. Um, maybe worth a watch if you haven't seen it. Um, but it, it's cool that they included this stuff, uh, especially including the Sonic CD stuff, because that actually isn't on this collection. But, uh, you know, the animation is so good on it, it's, it's really cool that they decided to just kind of preserve it on this GameCube disc. But, you know, I'm pretty sure that if you do end up picking this game, you're not trying to pay $15 just to, uh, have a bunch of extras. Although, <laughs> me being the kind of history nut I am, I probably would. But, that being said, here's a list of all the games you get. You get Sonic 1, 2, 3. Um, you get, of course, uh, the and Knuckles kind of versions of all those you can unlock. Sonic 3D Blast. Uh, depending on if you have the Japanese or English version, there are a couple extras. I think Comic Zone and The Ooze might both be Japanese. I don't quite remember, but they are, they are, you can get them in some capacity. Um, they also have Rystar um, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Um, once again, all of the, like, I guess, emulation or the port job is pretty good, and you get a ton of games. Um, if you have a GameCube and for some reason you don't have access to the one million different ways to get these games, I mean, for 15 bucks, you cannot beat it at all. Um, and the variety is pretty good, too. I mean, you know, you got, of course, the regular Sonic games are all, you know, regular Sonic games. Great for history, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you do have, like, Mean Bean Machine in there, which, you know, if you're a big fan of, uh, of like, puzzle games, well, really, it's just Poyo Poyo. But, I mean, if you're a fan of that, then, hey, that's cool it's in there. Um, they also have, like, you know, Sonic Spinball, which some people like it, some people hate it, but it's interesting. I mean, it's better than... Than not having Sonic Spinball, I guess. Um, still, it's a really cool set, and the thing I really do like about this collection is all of the games are um, basically one for one how they were on the Genesis. So all the weird stuff you could do with the debug modes and the cheats and the level selects all still apply. Um, you know, like I said, the fact that this is on the list is kind of crazy to me. I mean, 15 bucks. Um, if we're talking, do I recommend it? Absolutely. This is something you should definitely have in your GameCube collection. And, uh, you know, uh, at the price it is right now, it might be something you want to jump on. I'm not going to lie, my second cheapest game, I was really kind of uh, debating including this or not, because it's not really a game, but, I mean, it is something I kind of went out of my way to get. And granted, I got it for, like, nothing. I think I actually did get it for free from a friend. But uh, it's the GameCube preview disc. This thing would be seen at, uh, you know, basically kiosks or maybe a GameStop or something back in the day. Um, but as I went through this thing, I actually think... Uh, is well, well worth the $13 price tag that it comes with. And I'm not just saying that because it's like a not for resale kind of thing. I'm saying that because it has a bunch of really neat extras and history, of course. <laughs> I feel like I knocked on that a whole lot uh, last time uh, with the Sonic video. But I will say that there's some cool stuff here. They have like DLC for Game Boy Advance. They have stuff for um, basically Dr. Mario. And they have another thing for WarioWare, if you're a fan of WarioWare. Basically, you can plug in your uh, Game Boy Advance and download kind of like a like a thing for it uh, for those two games which is kind of cool you know especially actually if you have a GameCube kiosk this would be something worth having but those two features alone are pretty dang neat you do get some other weird stuff in here though like this crazy video explaining about the ESRB and uh, why basically playing sports with the wrong ball equals rating games I don't know I mean I get it they had to <laughs> do something on there to explain it. I still think it's kind of weird. But uh, other stuff they have is basically these cool sneak peeks at different games that were either at the time upcoming or maybe just released. I mean, they have like F-Zero, uh, Soul Calibur 2, some sports titles, um, Zelda Wind Waker. I mean, these videos are very interesting. Um, and it's just kind of cool to go back and like look at the history of these. You know, I've been taking these old uh, VHS tapes with like old um, advertisements and putting them on the channel. And so being able to kind of see something like that in disc form is very cool for me personally. You know, how far that goes for you kind of depends on how you feel about video game history. But it is like, like I said, to me, really cool to be able to kind of check these videos out and see how they tried to uh, advertise them back in the early 2000s. But then you have a whole bunch of uh, cool playable demos. I mean, they have like Beautiful Joe and you get a pretty good playtime on Beautiful Joe, I will say. Uh, in fact, they even have all the tutorials and like fully show you how to do all the stuff. Uh, they have a demo for Splinter Cell, which is really kind of cool. I, I was never a big Splinter Cell fan, but you know, still it's kind of neat to have that on this uh, disc. Um, they also have a demo for Billy Hatcher, which like always reminded me of Katamari, but still very cool. Um, but the one that really stands out to me, and maybe this is just because I'm such a big fan of the series, is um, the Sonic Adventure DX um, demo. It's kind of crazy because 
If you've played Sonic Adventure, the original one, or DX, whatever uh, version, you know that there are several characters, and each character has their own storyline. And, you know, with a demo, you'd think that maybe they just throw the first level from Sonic in there or something. But they actually give you a level for every single character, which to me is really cool. Because, once again, if you've played Sonic Adventure, you know what I'm talking about. But each character plays, like, entirely different. I mean, Sonic is, like, your classic 3D Sonic. Well, this was the first real 3D Sonic, so... A classic nowadays, but then you have like Gamma, we shoot stuff, you know, fro um, Froggy. Uh, Big the Cat goes out there fishing for Froggy. Um, you know, everything's a little bit different. So the fact that you get to play as every single character for just, uh, you know, one of their levels, and they're all random too, it's not like their very first level. Um, and also it goes through the controls and everything. It's just really cool. So once again, for 13 bucks, uh, this is kind of a neat piece of history. I don't know. If it's something that I can like recommend in the sense of like a game because as a game not quite sure you know it's not really a game you know what I mean it's it's just a bunch of stuff but for a $13 piece of like history uh, I'm actually very surprised to see a not for resale preview disc uh, basically so cheap I will say the absolute cheapest game in my GameCube collection uh, coming in at $11 Kind of a weird one as far as story is concerned, because a game like this usually doesn't have a story, but that's Tetris Worlds. Uh, Tetris Worlds, though, oh my god, you know, I if you've been watching the channel, you know I'm a huge Tetris fan. Like, when it comes to what puzzle game am I going to play on any video game system, it's going to be Tetris. I will say, this game is, like, a little weird. Um, I mean, they have the regular Tetris modes, which is fine, but they decided to give, like, a story mode and a plot. <laughs> you can kind of pick this weird little Tetramino guy and give him a hat. I like to play as the cowboy, but uh, it doesn't really matter. They don't do anything. Um, basically, it's just Tetris though and the quote-unquote story mode is you trying to clear lines to save uh, the Tetris blocks from different worlds before like a star goes supernova I know it's just one of those weird uh, weird things that uh, they, they decided to shoehorn in to make it seem like it's more than just a Tetris game um, the one thing I will say is like very weird about this game is every time you clear a line they have this very like creepy soft voice that just kind of says like And I'm not gonna lie, that's like a little bit like uh, disarming. <laughs> it's kind of strange. I haven't actually gone through the menu. You know, I've already recorded this. I got to thinking about it. I'm wondering if you can't like turn that voice off because it is extremely creepy. But regardless, um, the thing that I do like about this game is this is the first game that I personally played. Now, I don't know if there's some before it because I kind of skipped everything between Super Nintendo and this. Um, it has all these cool different rules. Um, I really like this one game type where you have all of the regular Tetris blocks except for they're kind of like piecemeal and you can make different parts fall off and slide into place. Um, there's also another one where you basically have to make like like a nuclear reaction and that one includes little single square pieces which is really great for like kind of slotting in and fitting to solve uh, the little trials and puzzles that is like a Tetris line. Um, I think this game is really cool, uh, but hey, that's just me. I mean, at 11 bucks though, yeah, all day long. If you don't have a Tetris game for your GameCube or a fun puzzle game for your GameCube, then in my opinion, this is definitely a game worth getting. Um, I'm really surprised that the opposite end of the spectrum, like I can, you know, personally recommend all three of these. Um, you know, I will say it's something to say about the preview disc being like not really a game. I don't know if that's for everybody. But, you know, when it came to the three most expensive games, those were just so pricey. And all three of these are not only reasonable, but a reasonably fun time too. But I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. So there you have it. Uh, I was actually a little bit surprised um, because I tell you what. Those aren't bad, um, you know, and for the prices, oh my god, especially with like these crazy pandemic prices, I would say go ahead and go for it. But hey, that's just my point of view. What do you guys think? Um, have you guys tried doing this yourselves? Uh, let me know down below. Uh, like I said, the app I'm using is Game Eye. Um, yeah, I'm not like sponsored or anything. It's just it's what I'm using. It's convenient. Uh, but you can really just look up the prices on price charting. But you know, what are your cheapest GameCube games, and are they worth your time? That's gonna do it for us today, guys. But once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. It would be really cool. Um, leave a comment down below about anything we, uh, we covered on the channel today. And uh, hey, as always, take it easy.